Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Together with these great partners, we are able to bring you quality information to help you reach your whitetail habitat goals quicker but more proficiently. Northwoods Whitetails Plot Doctor, Harper Growing Solutions Scent Thief Real Wood Productions Ace Hardware of Harrodsburg, Kentucky. Hey guys, welcome to the farm. Between raindrops here today, the good Lord has blessed a lot of the country over the last couple of days with uh, some really good showers. And to those of you that are not getting it, uh, sure still saying a prayer for you. Today, guys, we're going to talk about uh, some food plotting stuff. Sadly, in this, there's no there's no harm with this at all, guys. Um, no finger pointing and, you know, no downplaying of any of this that I'm going to talk about because the reason I'm going to talk about this is because I was there. I was there for many years until I found a way to not have to worry about, you know, food plotting like I used to. Not be so weather dependent um, yeah, as far as good and or bad, right? Like I said, I've learned through the, you know, school of hard knocks, and that's why I feel, you know, just blessed uh, enough now to be able to bring this information to you guys to try to help you not struggle. Um, so the last several year, got years, guys, if you've been following the channel, you're, you, could, you can uh, kind of follow along and tell that this has been one of my goals, right, is to, is to find a food plot system that works for most folks across the country. My clientele, you know, not just a not just a you know one hat covers everybody approach and and really dig deep into uh what we're doing good and what we're doing bad that's why i'm here today guys i'm standing on what we call the uh center line plot this is a good piece of our oh kind of our research piece of the farm if if you will uh and i'm going to touch on a couple things that tie into that with you today on this video so let's just start with that guys i i don't fret whether uh, as far as am I getting enough rain, of course, rain is great, right? But after I plant my uh, my summer food plots, the whitetail driven summer, whether you're north or south, I don't fret the rain after I plant that. Nowhere near like I used to uh, planting only fall plots or even when I started tapping into the summer and the fall stuff. After I plant it, the morning dews, if we do get a rain, that's great. I don't fret from there on. And I know that's hard for folks to believe. The truth is this. Um, this time of the year, I start relating this to the uh, the lull, right? The whitetail lull, the October lull that you hear of during the season. It's because what I see is I see folks, you know, trying to... I don't want to say belly aching, but trying to, you know, wait for a perfect time to plant a food plot, disking it all up, exposing the ground, having to wait till the ground is, the weather is right to get on it, right? Uh, it's too wet. I can't get on my ground to disk. Hey, now it's dry. Now I can get on and disk. Now, oh man, if it, I need rain because my food plots are going to dry out and uh, well, we're not getting rain, am I going to have to reseed my plots? And then, oh man, here comes the rain, and now now I've got erosion. Now my food plots, i got too much rain, and oh man, that was me. That was me to a T for many, many years. And I, it, it's hard for me to watch stuff like that and not try to help or not try to say something, because like I said, guys, there's better. there's a better way. There's a better choice out there. And what that is, guys, is get rid of that. Do get rid of that disc. Do go to the no-till system, but have a system where it's not just, you know, plant buckwheat in June and then let that buckwheat, uh, hope and pray that the buckwheat grows and then cover that over your, your fall uh, blends when you put that, you know, as far as crimp that down and roll that over your fall blends. That works, guys. That does work. I've told you before, and I won't, steer from that is buckwheat is a great cover crop for your fall uh, food plots. Problem with it is buckwheat is very high in moisture, right? 
Hence the reason it rots, hence the reason it, when you have the right conditions per the year in the right region, hence the reason that it really aids in your fall food plot program. Problem with it does, guys, is it doesn't benefit the soil near as much as folks think it does uh, because it, there's, it's just, it runs out. Let's say when the buckwheat advantage runs out, right, of the rot, what else is there? There's no clovers. You're not promoting any clovers because you've sprayed it. There's no nitrogen building going on. There's nothing. So what I found is I found a way to able to have that theory, but be building my soils during the season, during the summer, and also have successful food plots because the ground is always covered. So I don't experience that anymore that, hey, I can't get on the ground because this is a perfect example that's why i'm out here today dodging raindrops here with you guys perfect example i had to be creative on how to get up the road to get back here because we've got a quite a bit of rain the last couple of days now my road is washed out tire tracks are you know a little slippery but when i get to my fields there's no erosion everything's green everything's starting to surface through there's no erosion anywhere on the farm I look across the road and the other day I was on the on the uh, way to town and you know the big agricultural fields were just bone dry and then we got some rain and now they're washed right there's big puddles out in their fields and I'm going to show you this guys I'm going to show you why I'm standing here I'm going to talk to you about why I'm standing here this is a perfect like I said we call this the center line plot it's actually an acre and the, the road runs right through the center of it so I'm actually able to kind of split each side of the plots to do some stuff during the year to do some eye testing. So I'm going to show you this, guys. This side looks, you can tell, actually I have a little a couple spots in here where you can tell my sprayer or something goofed up with my sprayer. Um, so we've got some strip stuff going on in here, which is no big deal because some of this, uh, you know, maybe I didn't have to spray anyway. Uh, the, the goal is not to use herbicide, right, if we don't have to. Um, but I did on this plot because you can see there is wherever that the, the herbicide didn't hit there was some grasses and I've still got some brush that I'm trying to get rid of and stuff like that right so I did like to spray this both sides of this what I did on this side guys is I'm going to show you I'm going to take you through here I, I planted this in and I broadcast it in I put all and I, then I crimped that product down last year's product all the rye and the grass and the weeds and everything from last year, I crimped that down on it. Then I sprayed a, a, a cover of glyphosate, two quarts per acre of glyphosate on top of that. Three, four days later, five days later, no rain. Seven days later, no rain. I come out here like five, day five, and I have pictures here, guys. Pulled, the, pulled that thatch layer back. Now, I hadn't had a drop of rain. And it was moist under that, under that uh, thatch layer dug through and found a couple of the beans and, and uh, uh, found some of the peas and they were germinated five days no rain under that thatch layer germinating no rain other than i had high you know good dew morning dews so that's a testament right there right i was just checking on it just to see right but i wasn't worried about that so we get these rains guys and these plots have exploded the last couple of days here Warm weather, rain, uh, you know, maybe a day gap, some 80, 90 degree weather, more rain, and it's just perfect growing conditions. Looks like more rain coming in, in the forecast. So put that in there, guys. So I got past that hurdle, right? I, 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 I got to growing some stuff where a lot of folks around the country, I've got clients in Illinois and, and uh, Wisconsin right now that have sowed stuff in, and it's not growing it's this it's not not a no-till system there's no thatch on the ground there's nothing growing problem is guys if that sits in there too long and it doesn't start to have that moisture it's going to rot in the ground and then when you do get the rain if it doesn't all wash off and erode right what's going to happen is it's not going to grow because it didn't germinate quick enough so mine was germinating five days in no rain so what i elected to do guys this year on this uh, plot here this is a perfect example. You can see it's pretty wooly. You know, some of the stuff stood up on a turn. I'm going to put you down ground level so you can see. Uh, you know, there's some grass. Like I said, you can tell where the 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 uh, this strip right here where the I didn't 
that either I didn't hit it or something happened there or the the uh, sprayer wasn't going or whatever uh, but you can see right here guys some of this is you know sanding back up but you can also look down here and see all the clovers popping back up all my buckwheat my beans everything is coming through so we, we go over here where the where the uh, sprayer didn't hit yeah I've got some grasses and I've got some weeds undesirables growing in here but you look down and below it and I've got still I've got all of my beans I can see the peas all my clover is still growing jump over here where the sprayer was working again if that's layers down you can see all the beans uh, you can see the sorghum even I can see some sor sorghum even going all my all of my uh, perfect example guys this is what I'm dealing with out here in my plot rock right so a little manure out here in the field everywhere you look everything is alive in the ground nothing is not growing you can just see the buckwheat and, and all that stuff that green tint there guys okay so this side of the farm or this side of the plot that we're on right now what I did is I crimped it and I did not mow it or anything I just crimped it like I normally do and then I sprayed it with glyphosate right so what that glyphosate does it just helps that that product you know it kills some of the undesirables and the weeds or whatever that you're still trying to set back you can see there you got some little red bud or something growing in here right um trying to give it trying to make it as pure as we possibly can right okay so i i did not so i, I sprayed it and then but i didn't mow it right so it, it looks woolly and that's where folks get themselves in trouble with this program is i think is they don't they don't give um they don't give it the chance because I, it looks woolly. Oh man, it's just it's all scraggly and stuff here, guys. When I get back from client trips here in a couple of weeks, this stuff is going to be two, three foot tall. I guarantee you, if it's you know uh, a foot to th two foot, three foot tall, it just blows up. So all of this wooliness that you're seeing right now, right, this jagged grass and everything in, it's not going to look like this because that stuff's going going. It's it's uh you know it's set back so much. Then when that product your our our summer you know our white tail driven summer product kicks in, it's going to blow past it. You're not going to see any of this, right? So, and you pull this back, guys. This is the this is the thickness of my of my thatch layer over the last couple of years. I mean the dirt's right there. You can see good. You can even feel it. I mean I put my hand down there. That ground is cool. Uh, and you know, and I always try to cover this back up, but I mean This thatch layer. This is this year's thatch layer, right? This probably this much of it's let this year's This is all from last year, and it's all broken down enough that it's porous The ground is porous, right? So we don't need to be adding One of the things I want to talk about today guys is we don't need to be adding any There's a product out there that you know cuts thatch away and and you want to try to get rid of all your thatch that's not what you want in this system your thatch if your calcium uh, and this is a topic that i had with uh brad harper with harper growing solutions here um your uh calcium and and all your nitrogen and stuff is correct in these plots when we get it there right and my soil samples are excellent but when we get it perfect that'll start eating the ground starts eating and decaying that alone or by itself and you don't want to come in here and spray they do make products out there that you come in here and spray and it eats all this thatch away right get rid of your thatch that's not what you want on this because if you eat too much of that thatch away you are getting rid of your cover so i'm often asked is there too much ground cover um is there too much ground cover with the thatch over the couple of years to try to get that seed to soil contact when you put that in there so there could be something to that it all really depends on how much product that you had to crimp down from you know that last, last fall's rye and weed and and uh you know that you had so i haven't ran into that yet guys but i am building that uh aerator cedar and crimper so and the reason for that is is because each year is different if you get a really dry year and a, just a sporadic rain like last year your thatch doesn't do the rain mildew rot dry it doesn't have that 
uh, it doesn't have that chance to kind of really go through the decaying stages as much. So those years, I find the dry years are the years that your thatch doesn't go away as, as good, you know, as good as we want it to. You don't want it to all go away, it just doesn't break down. This year, now if we get the rains that we're having now, what I'll find is this all starts decaying, warms up, gets dry, gets wet again, dry, all of a sudden it starts breaking apart. And the, the perfect growing, the more perfect growing season weather, right, I don't find that I, uh, I have too much thatch. But an aerator ahead of your cedar wouldn't hurt. I just wouldn't aerate the whole thing, then come back and seed, make multiple trips. My goal is with this uh, new tool that I'm making, is to do just that kind of make it as a one pass right um so i'll keep you informed on that i've had some uh, some um, calls and some questions you know let's see pictures on that stuff and sadly the gentleman that was building it didn't get that done for me so we're, we're working on that as we go so this side here guys yep looks woolly you see everything's growing in there right it's it, it's woolly right but what i didn't do is i didn't mow this okay so a couple of years ago, I, I tried something. I, I took a, did the same deal, put the crimper on my, you know, seated, put the crimp, crimper to the product, crimped it all down, and I had a really strong rye cover crop that year. So, and it was woolly, and that's when, like, the first or second year I was here, and you think this is woolly. I mean, I had trees, and I had brush and cedars and everything growing out in here, right? Because I didn't till it to start with or anything. It was old hayfield, right? So everything that was growing in there was kind of kind of real bushy, woolly. Why I'm telling you this is what I did is I took the mower, and I said, you know what? That stuff was just an inch or two tall. I could see it coming, and everything else was so... I just like man that wooliness was driving me crazy right so i had a bat wing mower my neighbor's got a 16 foot bat wing mower i brought it in and we set it real high and we just clipped all the nasty stuff away well as he's going i'm standing behind him and i'm watching and i didn't intentionally do this but as i'm watching as he's going away i could see that thatch layer because of that um you know suction that 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 mower makes i could see at a low rpm set really high I could see that lifting that thatch and this was during a dry year right and it lifted the thatch and all of a sudden my brain is like okay wait a minute it lifted that thatch and I thought that might aerate that plot just enough right so it didn't it didn't take the thatch away it just clipped all the junk off the top so what I'm where I'm going with that is this it aerated it picked it up a little bit we got rain and some dews strong the next couple of days after that and that plot blew up so I've always kept that in the back of my mind. Should you mow, should you not? So let's jump to the other side of the plot here, guys. I'm going to show you something. Um, so always remember, I would not go in, I would not go in crimp. So I would not go in and seed, crimp, spray, and then go right and mow it. I would give it about a week. So you make sure all that product lays down. So you're not just mowing a bunch of the let's say you get into to a spot where it's not the perfect dough stage right and all that stuff starts standing back up again you don't want to mow it you want it you want to after you just spray it and you kill it with a crimper just give it about a week so it lays down and your your you know your new seed and stuff is only going to be a couple inches tall you're not going to hit that because you're going to mow at six eight inches tall if you want to that's where this side of the plot comes in guys i'm going to show you a couple things here now you can see on this side of the plot I'll switch you around so I'm on the right side here with you. You can see on this side of the plot, it looks more manicured. And the reason, so woolly over there, kind of manicured on this side. You can see the mowing strips. So I took that bat wing mower the other day when I mowed my uh, switchgrass, right? And I had that over here. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do a test this year. So this is a week, 10 days after I've seeded uh, into this, 10 or 12 days after I've seeded the uh you know this i'll show you this you can see it behind me all the buckwheat and the beans and the clover and everything coming up through the thatch looks really good and it was you know a lot of it was laid down but it looked just like that so i ran the mower over it slow rpm 540 rpm very high about eight inches high six eight inches high and i just went over the whole thing you can see guys is this thatch layer i'm going to turn you around here we're going to go for a walk I'm going to show you guys, look at all of the clover and the buckwheat, and you can just see this green tint to it, right? 
there's a little strip right there that the sprayer wasn't doing what it was supposed to be doing right but it it's it's more manicured here right it, there's no tall bush standing up but what i'm going to show you here is this so as we walk up through there the clovers all of the there's a big spot of clover there and all the buckwheat all the beans everything is finally coming in right but let's let's go down here that thatch layer is still here i did not get rid of the thatch layer by mowing so i'm going to test this this year and i'm going to bring this to you guys because yes it's another trip around it but if you if you can't be you know patient and you and you don't want that wooliness is there a benefit to actually mowing it now i can honestly tell you this side it looks like it is a little more more air air uh maybe more aerated because of the more um that just just could be you know the product that actually got crimped down was heavier in this spot i don't see any major differences there i just see that it looks if you're down here it just looks a lot cleaner so so why is that a big deal right why is that such a big deal and why am i bringing that to you this situation right here guys this has always been covered no erosion when i wanted to get out here and do something on the plot plot work mowing seeding whatever i spraying whatever i wanted to do i was able to do it because the ground's covered and every bit of this rain that i've got guys is is right here all this organic matter has got this covered and is breaking down and nothing gets eroded there's no anywhere through here no erosion all of the rain that i'm getting i'm keeping right if you thatch layer on the ground keeping all your water not disking not tilling that gets us to this point i think you're going to be blown away with what my soil samples say about my food plots it's it's hard it's hard to it's even hard for me to, to put a video like this out with them soil samples is because I know I'm going to get a bunch of negative Nancy's out there right saying that that can't be true and you didn't take your soil samples right yada 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 well guys I'm here to tell you I've taken my soil samples for many many years I've taken them the same way and when I sent those soil, soil samples in this year uh, to Brad Harper at you know plot doctor Harper growing solutions they sent those into a and I or I sent those right directly to uh, a and L in in uh, uh, Indiana Brad called in one of his first compliments I guess you could say was I don't know what you're doing but keep doing it because I've never seen that much good in a soil sample especially from the region that you're in as far as your organic matter my organic and on a, on a norm guys the organic uh, matter if you're from Michigan or you're from parts of Wisconsin you're tuning in you're gonna have some organic matters of you know maybe some 0.5s some ones you know a good system that's working is a three a four i don't have any of these food plots i got five acres of food plots I've got four acres of corn i've got five acres of food plots guys none of my food plots are under a 5.5 organic matter the highest being a 6.8 many of them 6.8 sevens ph all my ph which is we what we you know we're shooting for for that fall brassica blends are right you know right all of my ph sixes sevens guys i started with nothing but rock so i got a video coming down the road guys that we're going to tie into this here shortly when i get some time off the road here why plot doctor and not the other white jug one of the reasons is i'm, I'm able to target more specifically target certain things so long video here guys but i really wanted to show you this where we're at right now why i don't fret you know not having the right rain getting too much rain and taking that out of the equation helping you take that out of the equation like i said guys is i've been there i've done that i bought the t-shirt as i always say right and i want to help you get to what i 
really believe is the perfect situation to, to, for a food plotter, right? Um, because this, this deal here that I'm doing here, you can do anywhere across the country, but our blends are, are tweaked for the north and south region. So all of those strokes, so all of those struggles that you hear of the reasons not to do a summer food uh, system, too many deer, you know, and you're not doing yourself any justice, you're not helping them, you're wasting your time. I don't think I've wasted my time here at all. And what I look at that guys is on the deer side of it is this. If you got too many deer to the plate, then as a land steward, what we need to do is we need to manage that herd, trigger manage that herd, right? Trigger control that herd, not, not feed them, not help them as a health standard and not help our ground just because we don't want too many does on our properties. So that ties into this whole piece, guys, kind of a separate video. But I really wanted to show you planting, crimping, spraying, and just leaving it go versus planting, crimping, spraying. About 10 days later, big point here, don't come right back in and mow the same day like we talked, but you know, 10 or 12 days later, come back in and clip. Yeah, you're gonna run some of your product over but that's why we do it about, you know, seven to 10 days. Mow real high, not getting rid of your thatch layer, just cleaning it up a little bit. And we're gonna test as we go here, is there any difference? What I, what I found when I did this before, guys, they dried out a little bit quicker than what my left alone side did and not mowed after I crimped and sprayed. And the reason for that is I think there it was a little more like i said a little more thatch layer uh, i think there's a little more cover on that side when you don't do that but it wasn't a huge difference but now that the ground is a little bit better uh we're going to really test it we're really going to give it its all this year so all of this is all um you know has the plot doctor on it and we're giving it everything we've got you know this year and this is just one of those spots guys that i really wanted to to bring to you and bring you along because I'm going to be standing right here uh, in a couple of weeks and we're going to do some updates on this and I'm going to help everybody show you why this system that we're doing the whitetail driven summer and the whitetail driven fall system that we're doing no till is what you need to do on your prop properties guys so you don't have to fret the food plot lull right that we're going to label this there shouldn't be a food plot lull, a rain lull. If you're doing things right, you should be able to focus on other things on the property like I've been working on my access and stuff like that. Because you know that the plot armor that we are promoting through a thatch layer on these food plots is working for you guys, not against you on a dried out food plot. So the last point that we'll touch on is this. I get a lot of clients, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking this, my food plots are great. My, my ground is black. I've got great colored ground. That's great, guys. But here, keep in mind, I always just say this to my clients. I don't care what color the ground is. You can have black onion ground, uh, what I call onion ground, or that, um, you know, carrot ground that you see around Fremont, Michigan, and stuff like that, right? Nuevo, Michigan, uh, Central Michigan, parts of, you know, uh, Illinois, Iowa, that black, rich ground. That's great. But that ground is not healthy if it's dry. I don't care what color your ground is. If it's dry, it's not healthy. So that slogan that you see me tie to this uh, you know, process a couple times is if you till, you kill. That's the reason why. You're killing all of that you know, microorganisms that are working for you and the worms and all of that stuff, guys. You're, you're killing all of it. So take this one to heart, guys. And I'm going to get to work here before the rain sits in on me again. Uh, Take this one to heart, guys, and I'm going to help you tune in your per perfect food plot system, and this is a piece of the puzzle. Thanks, guys.